Hello everybody, welcome back, it's Jordan here. Today we're gonna to be building trees for the campground. So recently we took away all the trees because I was gonna modify this area. Most of the modifications have already been taken care of, such as the A-frame cabin mills plate integration, three bricks taller than the rest of the campground. It's got a little creek there with the arched bridge and also a nice pond in front. But there's one thing we're lacking and that's the presence of trees. So I'm really excited to build some new trees today and really spruce up this area. So in order to build trees, you need parts. And I came across this bin the other day that's full of parts that are gonna help us build trees. Whether they're tree limbs or green plates or little tiny saplings and bushes. I was really happy to find this because I knew I was gonna be adding trees to the campground. So this is gonna come in really handy. In addition to all of these parts that we're gonna be sorting, there's also all of these trees which were removed from the campground. There's different types, the ones with the two by two bricks, this massive one that needs to be parted out and rebuilt into smaller trees, and then there's some that are built using the one by one cylinders as well. And also you can't forget about all of these drawers over here in our parts inventory. They're full of trees and bamboo, leaves, two by two circular bricks, palm leaves, pretty much everything having to do with plant life for the Lego city. They take up quite a few drawers here in the sorted inventory, but you know what? That's not the end of the world because I love those parts. They add so much life to the Lego city. Here's all the green parts from that unsorted bin, plate, bushes, stems, pre-made saplings, spruce trees, green brick, and rock panels. While rebuilding all of these trees, I'm actually giving them an upgrade as well. So they look like that, using all of these leave elements that I found on the pick and build wall. Trees are coming along nicely. We've got a bunch upgraded here. Takes a long time because there's a lot of pieces that have to go into these. Like look at how many leaves are on each branch. Three and a half hours later, we've got one base plate full of upgraded trees. And I wanna make a lot more. So I've got a second base plate. I started taking the leaves from this massive tree here and I'm using them to construct smaller trees. I'm actually feeding cylinders onto flex tubing. Got three different sizes of flex tubing. So we have different sizes of trees. In fact, all of these trees here are actually fed onto different sizes of flex tubing, axles, and bars, so they're nice and sturdy. You can essentially use them as a wand. And I have all of those pieces just in this drawer right here. So we've got various sizes of axles, which actually work with the two by two circular bricks, but I prefer using the flex tubing, which once again, I have various sizes of in this drawer here. Just a little bit more forgiving and not as robust. I would like to build more trees like the ones found in the A-frame cabin set, but unfortunately right now I don't have those pieces. I have added those pieces to my BrickLink wanted list, so when I do my next order, I hope to obtain some more pieces to build this style of tree. Also be cool to have this color of limb as well. It's gonna look weird because these ones are a different color than the ones we're building today, but either way, having a plethora of trees in the campground is gonna look extremely good. Well, I guess I better get back to building more trees. After building 10 of the cylinder trees, I think I'm gonna build some of the arch trees. Uses the brown arches. And once again, I'm just gonna scavenge more parts from this monstrous tree here because there's a lot of arches there and that could probably build a bunch of these, but I wanna make them slightly bigger as well. The smallest one has two layers of arches then three layers of arches, and this one has four layers of arches, the bottom being the larger arches. And I actually built this a little bit differently than the ones in the past because there's those curved slopes that are holding the branches in place so they won't fall off. So once again, it's very sturdy. It is a bit sparse between the layers of arches. So when you look at it from this perspective, it's a bit sparse. But for the most part, you're looking at it like this here. So that's not really a huge issue. What I could do to eliminate that issue is just take these leave elements that I'm using a copious amount of right now 
and put them on the bottom of the limbs and that would fill in some of the space. Also, I could use these connectors so we can put those branches back at those unique angles. I haven't been using those with any of these trees, but I actually do have a plan to use those in a new way to help build a new style of tree. I actually use them pretty nicely here in the zoo, specifically with the trees in the African exhibit. Those look pretty awesome. But I plan on building a new style of tree, something that I've never really done before. And these trees are actually gonna go up against the white wall behind the A-frame there and potentially going along the creek and behind the tree house. And it's gonna add more depth to the campground. None of the trees that we built today are gonna to be able to do that because there's not enough room to stick big trees like this here behind the A-frame cabin. So these branches or leaves have to hinge off the tree and it almost has to be three-sided. It has to have a flat back so that it can go flush up against that wall. I'm gonna work on building a prototype for that after I build more of this style of tree. I was able to build six like that, only one of the tall ones though, it's pretty part intensive. Altogether, I've built 36 trees here today. So here's what I've come up with so far for the tree with the flat back for against that back wall there. It uses those connector elements to get the leaves downward facing and then it has the one by three inverted slopes as well pointing in either direction off the sides. So we can put the smaller limbs on the left and right and then down the face of it, there's the hinged limbs as well. I think it'd do a good job of covering up the back wall. I'm not sure how I feel about this design. I mean, it definitely ticks the box of being flat backed and also would provide some color on that back wall there. But pretty simplistic design, it's pretty solid. Uh, all the limbs are held on with those one by two curved slopes, uh, both the connected ones and also the ones on the inverted slopes as well. It's sort of funky. I think it gets the job done. Sort of a different tree style with those uh, leaves downward facing like a drooped leaf almost. It's pretty tall. You can make it as tall as you want, really. Pretty stable design for what it is. It's a tree that sort of serves a purpose. It's to add depth to the campground and fit in the narrow space potentially behind the A-frame cabin. So I think it's pretty good. It might be slightly modified in the future. Like maybe I could have some drooped branches coming off the left and right side of it to match the front. But I think I like the overall design. It's pretty good part usage, I would say. A lot of stuff that I found on the pab wall. And if I put those... Along the back there, maybe not like solid, but sort of scattered in bunches maybe, even behind the creek and the uh, treehouse there, it could potentially add some nice depth to the campground. Here's a little bit of a simplistic prototype. I think this one looks a lot better, doesn't it? <laughs> Just goes to show you when you use the bigger uh, limb elements, it fills it in nicely along with those additional leaves as well. Now this one, I just put those connectors between the inverted slopes, separated them every six inverted slopes. Whereas this one here, I put actually snot bricks as the separation and I did it every two inverted slopes. This doesn't look bad. Maybe if I put the limbs on it, or the, sorry, the leaves on it, it'd look half decent, but definitely pretty sparse. Not the vibe we're going for, I don't think. Just wanted to try it out. I'm currently using a lot of these in the campground and I still plan on using them. There's nothing wrong with using the pre-molded pieces. I think they look good and they're a quick way to add some nice color and detail and bushes to uh, scenery. I've also used a lot of these in my Lego city. They use substantially more pieces, obviously. Uh, this is the flowered bush and you can also make it a little tree, such as the ones I built for the mansion right here. You can also use the lime green and dark green flowers on there and it gives them more of a bush feel. So I think I'm going to build a bunch of these as bushes to replace some of those pre-molded bushes in the campground. Everybody, a moose has fallen over and cannot get up. It is a sad day. I started building trees today at 10 a.m. and it is now 5 p.m. Seven hours of tree building. Yeah, crazy. I also remembered that I built bushes similar to the ones that we just saw in the last clip, and they're out front of the zoo here. 
but they're actually double stacked. Another cool way that you can use those awesome bushes, you can just keep stacking them and stacking them and stacking them and build really full trees that almost look like a bush and you could just keep going up and up and up. I don't know, I've never really gone past too tall though. We now have 27 bushes for the campground. Did we get carried away? Maybe. Well, 27 of them weren't built today. These flowered ones were already built, but still, we have 27 bushes for the campground. And guess how many trees? 38 trees. Yeah, 65 total trees or bushes for the campground. And that's why it took seven hours to construct all of these. I have no idea how many pieces were used to construct all of these trees, but it's crazy to think that there are 65 individual trees or bushes that are going to populate the campground. So at the beginning of this video, I seriously thought that I was going to be able to build all those and place them all in the campground. But now as the day goes by, I realize I probably don't have enough time to do it as strategically as I want. Because I think all of these awesome plants that we built or trees and bushes have to be placed strategically so they look the best in the campground. Also, before I place those, there's some changes that I want to make to the campground. The other day I added this trail that leads up to the A-frame cabin. Built it right into the mills plate. I want to add more trails like that to the campground. And obviously I should do that before I place a bunch of trees and bushes. Specifically, I want to build one right here leading up to the treehouse. So in order to do that I've got to go through pop out all this plate and then blend it in so it looks proper. And I don't know if I want to add any more trails anywhere else here. Where else would I put one? Where would it look good? I don't know. Like maybe going up to Winnie the Pooh but I don't think that would look too good. So I think it's just the one trail that I want to add to be honest. And then I think I need to add more smaller plants. More bamboo all these different whatever leave elements and everything throughout the campground. And I'm going to do that before I add all these massive trees and bushes. That in itself is going to take quite a bit of time. And then strategically placing all of the trees and bushes that we built today in the campground will once again take more time. I also want to sleep on this design here and figure out how many of these I have to build. Because I can't just have one. I've got to build, what, five or ten of those probably for that back wall and I want to sleep on the design because I'm truly not sold on this and I don't know if this is what we're going to run with. Either way we got lots done today and the campground is going to look so good when we place all 65 of these trees and bushes. It is going to be amazing. Thank you so much for popping on by. Remember like, subscribe and stay tuned.